busiest quarters of application submittals that, um, that we've had in the past five years. And it's hard enough for us to try to keep track of all these things and keep everything moving. I can only imagine how difficult it is from your side to, you know, to find out what's going on in your area, know, know what the response times are, know what the criteria of those response times, you know, of, of how to respond to projects. It's very difficult. Um, it's, there's a lot of moving parts. And I just want everyone to know, we recognize that we've been working very closely with Michaela um, and you've seen other members of our staff to try to give you information and training on, on how to navigate everything. And again, we are creating some of these tools specifically in response to requests that have been coming from the NLA um, and other areas about how do I get involved? How do I find out about projects? Um, but I just, I just want to recognize that I understand where your what your concerns are and your questions are, and we're trying to do everything we can in our end to help help you find the information you need, answer your questions. Um, I, I just also need to say it is an extremely busy time down at the city, um, and uh, and if you don't get calls back right away and things like that, that's just because our staff is really managing a, a lot of different competing needs right now. But they they will get back to you if you have questions. So with that, uh, Mariah, do you want to go? To the, I think you're driving. Next slide, please. So what we're going to do is we are, we're going to give you an overview of the online permit center, um, which is our main software tool that we use for applicants to submit information to the city. Um, it is also the, the vehicle for the public to get in and view land use applications uh, and find information. We believe it's, it's, you know, there are still some bugs in the system that we're working out. I, it's been a, a very difficult challenge for us to launch the new software get it running. We've had some, some minor issues that have popped up that we are trying to get resolved. Um, so if you ever have issues, please let us know because we wanna make sure that we're fixing them um, as quickly as we can. But it does work pretty pretty seamlessly in terms of getting, uh, being able to, through the different tools, find the area of town, find the project, get linked to the project, and then pull the information, like the drawings and the, and the, the additional documentation that gets submitted for you to take a look at it and then be able to provide your comments. What we're trying to do here is just show you how all those linkages work and where those connective kind of connective tissue is to, to you know, what's going on in my neighborhood to, to actually finding the actual documents. And our team will show you how to do that. Um, so with that, it's gonna, you know, we, we'll talk about what that customer interface is with, uh, with uh, the software, which we call Portal. And Mariah's gonna show you how to get in there and navigate it, find things. And then Tanner's gonna come back and talk about another tool that we developed, which is really coming off the benefits of launching this new software and all the data that we can pull and, and, and how we linked it to a new addressing system that had to get created for, uh, for this new software. That is really a, a really dynamic tool that can let you zoom in, zoom out, drill down to specific information. The key is just to get people trained, become familiar with it. And once you start to learn it and understand how it works, it really becomes intuitive I can tell you that our staff uses it every day. I personally use it when someone asks, uh, if I get a question on a project, the quickest way for me to find information is almost the exact way that you're gonna be shown here from, from Mariah and Tanner to find information about a project, get to a drawing, see a site plan. I'm, you know, from my position, I'm almost doing the same thing that you would be doing to find the same information. Um, so I'm hoping that'll be beneficial for you as they go through that. And again, uh, we'll, we'll be here to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Next slide. So with this, uh, this, is, this is the last thing I'll talk about. This is basically all the service areas within the city of, um, uh, within the community development department in the city. So we handle, and the software handles building applications, planning land use applications, the, uh, the private development engineering uh, work that goes along with development applications, doing work in right away, building streets, sewer lines, that kind of stuff. All the franchise utility work that goes on. We also try to play, you know, help try to play air traffic control with all the construction management. Because as you can imagine, with all the activity in town, sometimes we have detours going into detours, and there's a lot behind the scenes that needs to happen to figure out how we're going to do that. On top of, we've got another, you know, we've got the large transportation bond project that's going to be kicking up over the next couple of years. So making sure that we control, you know, we, we can adequately um, assess traffic control is a big thing. Code enforcement cases. So if you have a code enforcement complaint on something, you actually use this portal to, to submit that. If you need to get a business license or any one of the various licensing programs, they use this. 
And then we also use it for another host of agreements that's more specific to development around agreements and SDC calculations and collections and all that kind of stuff. In addition, that software also runs programs within the fire department, utility department. This is how, you, how people who have short-term rentals um, uh, submit their room taxes. This is how we receive our franchise fees. So there's a lot of benefit, there's a lot of programs, a lot of customer interface that occurs now through this permit center portal that we want to make sure that everyone's aware of um, because it is really kind of becoming we're, we're, uh, the one-stop shop for development and related activities. So with that, I'll be here for the entire session. I can help answer questions, but I'm going to turn it over to Mariah and she's going to start diving into some of the details. All righty, thanks, Russ. <laughs> And thanks for that overview of um, what the online permit center is and everything that it encompasses. Um, as Russ mentioned, I will be um, giving you guys a tutorial on um, what that portal looks like and how you can use that particular tool to search for property and development information um, within the city of Bend. Um, so to start out, um, for those of you who have been uh, interested in property information and project um, development information over the last few years. Um, this screen may look familiar to you. This is a screenshot taken from our old software called ePlans um, that really um, for, for our public facing users, the online permit center portal has been a replacement for ePlans, um, not only for how staff goes in so does those plan reviews and moves projects through our process, um, but also for um, you as public users um, are able to go in and, and see some of that project documentation as well. Um, so ePlans is getting retired and, and now we have this new portal tool um, to, to allow you to do the same sort of thing. Um, what you'll find in this new portal, um, we do think it's a lot more intuitive and user friendly than ePlans was. It's a little easier to navigate and find what you're looking for. Um, and that's what we're going to be showing you in our demo uh, right after this. Um, as Russ mentioned, just to expand on that a bit, um, you got to see that slide that showed all of the different programs that use the online permit center. Um, some of the other customer benefits that we see with the portal um, for all of those programs is we now have um, a one-stop shop, a hub where um, whether you're an interested member of the public or whether you are an applicant or a customer um, submitting those applications, you're able to do all of those different activities that you're looking to do from one single location. Um, so, you know, whether you're looking to pay your fees, whether you're looking to schedule an inspection, um, submit your applications, find out project status, um, you're able to do all of that, um, again, from, um, from your one-stop shop. <clears throat> and so um, today we won't be going into um, the myriad uses of, of Portal um, as far as if you were an applicant or a customer. Um, submitting items through that um, through that portal. What we are going to be focusing on today is how um, you as interested members of the public can search for property or development information. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pause my screen here and we'll go ahead and hop right to it and jump in to portal so you can see um, how that looks. Uh, so what I have here pulled up on my screen now, you should be able to see um, the City of Bend webpage. Um, I'm starting here on the Community Development Department um, homepage. Um, from here, we have a nice big button that will take you to the Online Permit Center. Um, so this is kind of our resource page, gets you any information that you might need to get you ready to be able to use Portal. Um, and when you're ready to access that site, um, again, we have a big um, button here that is, is going to take you to our portal homepage. Um, and this, this, is, this is it. Um, so if you were um, you know, a customer, if you were going to be submitting an application um, to the city, um, the first thing that you would need to do is create a portal account. You'd be able to do that by registering here. 
Um, one of the nice things, though, is if um, you are just a member of the public interested in searching for some information, um, there's no need to have an account. If you don't want to, you can utilize some aspects of this site, um, you know, just just as as a public user. Um, and so with that in mind, um, we're going to be focusing on a couple key aspects um, of this page. Um, where you're going to be able to do some of that that search and research that you want to do. Uh, the first item that we're going to be looking at is um, property search. Um, so this is available from two different locations on this page. First, you'll see this hyperlink in this um, kind of upper menu bar. Um, as well, if I scroll down a bit, there is a property information search um, kind of icon and link here in this bottom right hand corner as well. Uh, so that's where we're going to start. Um, that is how you are able to um, pull up any property that's within the city of Bend and be able to see what sort of development activity is going on at that location. Um, one very important caveat that is important to know about the Online Permit Center portal is because we launched this um, at the very tail end of 2020 um, in December, we only brought over projects that were active at that time. We did not migrate all of our historic records into this particular um, public viewer. And so um, it's just, just a good thing to keep in mind that you know if you're searching for a property, maybe you know that there's something that happened five years ago at that location, that information will not be available here in Portal because again, we didn't bring over all of our history of migrated records. There's just a, a very big body there. Um, but instead, um, what Tanner is going to demonstrate for you here at the tail end, that's going to be your better tool for getting that more historic and long-term picture of uh, what has happened at a property over time. Um, instead, Portal is good for more recent projects and for being able to view the documentation that is related to those projects. So we'll continue talking about that as we go along today, but just want to start out with that um, sort of important distinction between what tool is going to be best for you, depending on what you're looking for. Um, after we look at property information, the second option I will show you for how to search for um, planning applications specifically um, is to use this application search link here under your um, your planning um, widget area. So um, those are going to be the two, two different search options that I will cover with you. So to start, we are going to start with um, just searching by property. And so again, I can either use this link here in my bottom right hand corner or this one at the top of my page here. And I'll go ahead and click that. And that's going to bring me here to my property locator page. Um, from here, it's really handy. There is um, a bit of instructions here below your search bar um, that kind of tell you what, um, what your parameters are that you can search within. And you'll notice that you both have a search bar as well as a map down here below. Um, first, I'm going to show you how you can use the map to um, search for a property. Um, this is a great option if you maybe don't know what the exact address is, but you know what street corner it's on, um, you can find property information this way. Um, and so either by using your plus and minus buttons here um, or just scrolling with your mouse, you can zoom in um, and then click on a property that you are interested in. Doing so will highlight it, and then we'll automatically um, return those search results for that property for you. So here at the top, you have some high level information about you know, what that tax lot is, what um, addresses are associated with that parcel, property owner. Um, and then here towards the bottom, you'll see a couple different accordions open up um, that will show what sorts of current applications um, are, are occurring at this location. Um, so here you'll see we have some building permits. We also have um, an engineering permit. 
um, I'll go ahead and keep my building permit um, application widget open. Uh, and then here you can see kind of a high level summary of what, what these different items are. Um, again, that is the development activity going on at this location. Um, it will always have a permit number. These are um, also a link, so you can click on this link to go see more detailed information about this particular item. Um, but otherwise, kind of at the high level summary, it'll tell you what sort of application it is, you know, what the status of this application is, whether or not permits have been issued yet. Um, there'll be kind of a short description um, and then also some dates. Um, and so then when I want to perhaps learn more about this electrical permit, I can click this link and it will take me here to the permit status page where I can see some more information. Um, now, this is about all the information that you would expect to see for um, researching a, a permitting application because not all of those um, are, are public record like planning applications are. Um, but you would be able to see, again, a bit more information about what sorts of permits, or what sorts of activity was going on there. Um, for my next example, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my property search. And from here, I'm going to use my search bar this time to find a location. And so here, <clears throat> I'm going to start typing. As I do, it's going to suggest um, addresses that it thinks I might be looking for based on what I've typed in so far. So that's really kind of a handy, um, handy tool. And this 606 Congress is the one that I'm looking for. So I can select that from my list. Here again, it's going to take us to our um, uh, property results page. Um, again, I can see tax lot information. I can see owner information. Um, and here again, towards the bottom of my page is where I can see the accordions and open them up to see what sorts of development uh, activity is going on there. Here again, you'll see we have some building permits. We also have some planning applications. Um, and so then for this example, I will um, go ahead and open up one of these items so you can see sort of the full breadth of um, information that is available for you to see on planning applications because they are public record. Um, similarly to what we saw before, you do have you know, some sort of nice high level summary information here um, to start. But then again, when you want to take that deeper dive to go look at this particular application, you click on the link. And that's going to bring you to the planning application status page. Um, so lots of good information available for you here. Um, you'll have the project number, project name, what type of project it is, um, what its current status is, um, as well as any kind of description or public notice summary notes um, here in this top section. This is also where you'd be able to see who the planner is, who um, is the, the, the point for this particular project. Um, so their contact information is here. Um, again, you have more location, property owner contact information, um, and also a, a view as to um, what the application type is and you know, what approval track this item is on. As we scroll down, you can also see um, the status of any reviews that are occurring on this um, project, as well as if and when a hearing is scheduled, um, that information shows up here as well. So you can see um, you know, date, time, location for where that's gonna be held. And then here at the bottom in your documents and images section, um, this is where you're then able to open up any of the uh, project documentation that you're interested in looking at. Um, so you'll see it's quite a long list. Um, all of these items are hyperlinks. So you can click on any of these to open that item and see more detail. Um, another um, nice thing that can, can help you out when you're looking maybe for a particular item is to look at the file type here in this column. Um, so if, if you happen to know that it is a 
plan that you're looking for, that can be a good clue there. Um, conversely, if you're looking for the final decision or for a letter or a photograph, um, that can help you kind of just quickly uh, pick that out from the list and distinguish that. Um, so for this example, I will go ahead and open up this decision. Um, again, I'm just going to click on the hyperlink. And here you can see on my screen, it's opened up this PDF. So I could go read through this document um, to see what that, what that final decision was. Oops. All right, so last item that I'm going to show you, I'm gonna go back to our portal homepage. So I showed you two different ways that you can use the property search tool. And that really is great if you know, um, if you know what property you're interested in and are wanting to see sort of the wider picture of the current development information or current development going on there. Um, a second option you have available to you is to actually search for a particular planning application that you know exists out there. Um, and to do that here under planning and historic on our homepage, you can click on application search. This takes you to a very similar looking page. Um, uh, you can search again by the map or with your search bar. Um, and again, we're searching for a planning application. Uh, so with this is where you could type in that project number. Um, one nice feature of this page is um, these project numbers are quite long. Um, so even if you don't have the whole thing, but you maybe know part of it, you can start typing that information in. Um, and again, it's going to return results that uh, it thinks I might be looking for. This is the project that I was intending for us to find. Um, so I will go ahead and select it. Um, and now, rather than taking you to that first um, property information page, instead, the shortcuts me straight to the planning application, again, that I was looking for. You're going to see the same information here that we saw on our last screen. You're going to see your um, you know, high-level summary information of the planning application, as well as um, the, the planner assigned to this particular project. Then as you scroll down, this is a newer um, application that has just come in. So you'll see some of the reviews, hearings, et cetera, haven't been um, scheduled yet. Um, but here again, you can go in and get an early look at um, what some of the plans and other items have been submitted for this particular application. And so that pretty well does it for the demonstration I wanted to give you guys on some of our portal tools. Um, so give me just a moment. I will minimize my screen and get my PowerPoint presentation pulled back up. And so here again, just to reiterate what I chatted about in the beginning, um, Portal is a great tool for finding projects that were active as of December 2020 when we launched this. Um, this new software. Um, and it's where you can find all of that detailed document information um, for any projects that you're interested in looking at. Um, from here, I'm going to turn it over to Tanner. He's going to show you the Data Explorer tool. Um, and it really is a lot more robust, has some really cool features that he'll be able to walk you through, um, and definitely for getting the full scope of what activity has happened on the property um, historically the Data Explorer tool is going to be more handy for that type of research. So with that, Tanner, over to you. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Yes. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you, Mariah. I am going to probably steal the screen here in one second, but I'll just I'll land here. But thanks for the introduction. As uh, Russ and Mariah just mentioned, I'm gonna kind of give you guys a quick overview of our new mapping application called the Community Development Data Explorer. And really it's just a new platform we built to provide seamless access to all of our permitting data that we have available from multiple systems. Um, and so there's a public facing version I'm gonna demo today. We also use it internally and have a, a, a little bit more 
robust version internally it has additional things um, and so we're using it just as much as you guys are using it as russ alluded to um, and really the whole goal here was to build targeted applications that can be used to answer questions related to community development uh, in the city as well as specific projects or maybe specific projects within neighborhood associations um, and so Really the goal today will be quickly to walk through, really show you how to find this application uh, on our website. And then we'll spend some time talking about the overall platform and intent of each of the, the applications we've built, as well as some kind of housekeeping, housekeeping and data reminders. Um, we've already talked about some of them this, this morning already. And then we'll dive deep uh, into each one and how to use them. And what I'm gonna try to do is fold in some examples and scenarios throughout the demo. Uh, that are applicable to this group and audience and then if we should have time at the end for questions for uh, anything that we cover today both portal and the data explorer so with that i'm going to try to steal the screen and see if it works this time uh, i think there we go screen one all right so now you guys will hopefully be seeing my uh, screen now, which is a web browser. And basically we're at the Bend, City of Bend website, uh, bendoregon.gov. And so I'm gonna show you how to quickly get to this uh, web mapping tool, but I'm sure we will also be sharing links out with the materials from this meeting. So if, if you miss that, this is the quickest way I think to get there. So if you go to the City of Bend website and scroll halfway down, you're gonna see a services banner. And in that banner, there is a, a couple green blue buttons and one's called maps. And when you click on that maps button, it should jump open. I'm gonna close that old website. So we've got room here. Um, it's gonna land you at our City of Bend interactive map gallery. And this is gonna be the launch pad for a lot of our current mapping applications that are available to the public. So as you scroll down, you're gonna see a gallery of applications that we have available for, for the public to use. Additionally, if you keep going down, you're going to see a PDF map library. So this is now our new source for uh, wall size PDF maps, uh, things like our zoning map, our comprehensive plan map, or maybe our TSP map. Um, this is where you can access and download those maps um, to have on your computer or use elsewhere. But scrolling back up to this public applications gallery, uh, you're going to find the Community Development Data Explorer uh, icon, which is on the bottom row currently of the gallery, and we can just simply click on it and that should launch us into uh, the platform itself. <coughs> Apologize, I'm a little under the weather. Um, so now that we know how to find it, and once we've opened it, uh, we're going to land on the introduction splash page. And I just want to take a moment to also mention, we built this application uh, with modern browsers in mind. And so our new platform requires you to be in a new browser such as Chrome or Microsoft Edge, or it's called Chromium or Mozilla. Um, so if you're using an old outdated browser, you might run into problems while trying to open this uh, application up from the start. So just heads up, we need to use a modern browser. And in addition to that, the current form of this uh, tool or application platform is built around desktop screens or tablets. It's not really recommended for mobile devices at this point. We are currently working on a redesign that would be more fluid and able to handle um, mobile device screen real estate issues and challenges. So that will be coming down the pipe, but you'll see in some of the tools we demonstrate today, there'll be a couple warnings um, that this tool doesn't really work well on a, on a cell phone. So keep that in mind as well. And then lastly, as Russ alluded to, we are currently in the process of still in that migration. And so please be advised that data may change as we currently work through a lot of QA, QC work with that migration. And so just be advised that things can change as you look at this uh, tool from day to day. All right, so those are my quick introduction housekeeping pieces. So when you land on the introduction page of the Community Development Data Explorer, um, there's a couple things on here I wanna point out. One, uh, we provide some details about all of the available applications we've built. And again, they're tailored to specific needs and questions. So as you scroll down through this introduction page, it's a great resource when you come back into this after the presentation to learn more about what each application can do and kind of what its focus is and also what its limitations are. So we've got descriptions on all of these, these pieces that we've put together. I'm not gonna go over them because we're gonna look at them quickly one by one and kind of show how to use them. I wanna point out though, towards the bottom, we have a help section. And although it looks like it's very small, uh, when you open up this PDF at the end, it says click here, that will pop open to our Community Development Data Explorer help documentation. And this is a living document that we're currently adding to all the time. 
Um, and essentially it provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the Data Explorer, hopefully answering questions around basic use, maybe how to use our search tool or how to navigate what we call pop-ups, or it could be more detailed instructions about you know, how to find a list of applications for a property. Um, and so as you look through here, there's a lot of subject matter, there's a lot of step-by-step -step instructions and you can zoom in and out. And if you have two monitors, it's great because you can have this open on one side and then have the Data Explorer open on the other and walk through how to do some of this, um, how, how to do some of these queries and how to, how to navigate through the tools. So this is a great resource after this um, presentation. If you're in there and have questions, it's great to open it up and look at it and see if we already have some step-by-step -step instructions on how to get around a problem you might be facing. So that is there, it's a living document, as I said, so we'll hopefully keep updating it as things develop. And then lastly, at the bottom, we have a section on for more information. So if you have questions about permits specifically and applications, uh, we've got some links to the community development department and maybe some uh, contact information on that side, as well as our online permit center. And then if you have more questions about the maps and the, and the mapping application we've built or report problems or provide suggestions and feedback, we have our general mailbox at the bottom that you can directly email to. So that is kind of the splash page. It's a great resource, as I mentioned, um, but just something to be aware of as you come back into the tool and might have further questions about what, what is what. Okay, so jumping in here, uh, I'm gonna start with the permit lookup tool. And really, I'm going to take, again, a quick moment just to mention, I'm going to talk about some of the format and how some of these um, specific little widgets work. And there's going to be a lot of commonality across each one of these um, applications we look at. So I'll try to point that out. I'll spend a little bit of time on that um, just as a heads up. And then I probably won't talk about it as we go through the other tools and um, just know that we've already kind of covered most of that information. So what is the permit lookup tool? Um, it's really, it was, it can be used to explore the history of permitting and licensing activity for any property within the city. And it's really built to be a simple, clean, easy to operate uh, kind of tool with the, the goal of providing the public really the ability to find permit numbers if all you know is the location, address, or maybe tax lot. Um, and so it's kind of that launch point of doing research. Uh, I think some good examples that I can think about or maybe you're driving around town and you see construction on a property and you want to know what is it, what's it going to be. Uh, you can come in here and use this tool to hopefully find the permits to look up the information that will answer that question. You know, the other question, the other kind of example is maybe someone's buying a house and they want to know what permits have been approved by the city as they do their due diligence work. This could be a great starting point to do that research to see what permits have been pulled and filed. So with that, uh, I'm going to step back and just kind of give you a quick overview of a few things and then we'll, we'll dive into how to use this. So when you open this tool up, you'll notice we've got the map and, and then on the right hand side, it defaults open to an about panel. And this is just really kind of another reference point of some step by step instructions on how to use this tool and what its intent is. So you can look through these and if you become familiar enough with it, you don't need it. You can always close it by punching the X here and it tucks back up into the drawer. And up in this, this gray banner, we've got a sequence of uh, widgets that we can open up. Uh, the first one is the legend. So this is pretty generic. Um, it changes, it's dynamic. As you zoom in and out of the map, it will update and give you more details on what data we have in the map view. Next to that, we have the layers list. And so this is really just kind of a way that you can see what data is available in, this, in these maps. Um, in this case, we don't have a whole lot of data. We meant to be clean, so we don't have a lot of different layers we can add and remove to add context. But in certain mapping applications we've got out there, you'll see a whole long list of data we can add to this to add context and do your research. So we'll talk about that more as we get to the end of this uh, demo. And then the last piece is the base map gallery. Uh, this is kind of a generic uh, box of different base maps that we can apply to our map to fit your needs. So feel free to come in and switch the base map if you like aerial imagery or a topography map, or if you want to stick with our City of Bend um, base map color scheme. And then the last kind of widget in this piece that I want to spend some time on is the search tool. And there's a lot of parallel between what Mariah just presented on the search tool within the portal website and this search tool. Um, but this one has been expanded a bit to allow access for you to search for a variety of things or in locations within the city. And so I've expanded the search tool down um, but what we've included in the search tool is a way to search addresses, tax lot numbers, subdivision names, building and planning application permit numbers, 
um, business and license registration numbers or business names, our sign applications, and then kind of a catch-all global addressing search in case we can't find your address in our city addressing records. And so this tool by default searches all of that information uh, when you start typing in some text. And it's, it does a predictive text guessing just like uh, the portal website does. Uh, if you know what you're after, you can always narrow down and search for one item within this list versus all of them. But I'm gonna leave it on the default global search and um, just know that we can use this to, to leverage and find where we wanna be on the map or we can simply navigate on the map um, as Mariah showed. Uh, on the portal website. So you can zoom in and out on the map and find your way to the property of interest. So to use the search tool, you can begin typing. So if I knew the address maybe was one, two, three, four, I can start typing and it's gonna give me a lot of suggestive text. And so we could pick any one of these uh, and be off and running, or maybe we were after a, a tax lot number and maybe we know it's 17, something. Um, it'll predictively pull that tax lot record and give us the, the recommended suggestion. And we can use that again to navigate to that tax lot. We could just as easily type in a subdivision name and I'm gonna type in Chevlin. And it's gonna grab addresses with Chevlin cause it doesn't know exactly what I want, but I know I want a subdivision. So I can come down, I'm looking for a, a name of a subdivision that started with Chevlin, I can probably find it. So this is a very fluid tool and um, in regards to permit numbers, this will search, uh, as Mariah mentioned, our old system and our new system. So you can search for permits using a PZ number. So I can start PZ20 and I can start to finish the rest if I don't know it, or if I knew it all, I can copy and paste in here and I can search for these permits and find them. I could have just as easily done a PL, which is our new permitting system and find those as well. And so these are some of the migrated records that show up first, but if you have the permit number, you can search in here and um, hopefully the map will find it and it will update the location and pop up a pop up with more information about it. So this search tool, why I spent so much time on it is going to be found in all of these applications in various forms and becomes very powerful and I'll demonstrate that in a second. So without further ado, why were we looking at the permit look to look up tool and how to use it. So I've opened it up. And so let's say I have an example of, I wanna know what's going on uh, on Third Street where I've seen they've demolished a bunch of buildings um, near the old, um, what's called Hardy's Hot Wings, I think. And so I know the address to that area was somewhere around 210 Northeast Third Street. So I'm gonna open up this tool and I'm gonna search for that address. And I accidentally selected the wrong one. So now we're gonna switch to the right address. So I've searched for an address. It's taking me to 210 Northeast Third Street. And it showed me that pop up and it showed me the address that I've arrived. And this makes sense. This is right by the underpass on Third Street. And I've seen a lot of buildings being demolished. I wanna know what's going on here. So I've come into the tool and all I have to simply do is click on the tax lot of interest. And what happens behind the scenes is it goes behind and grabs all of the permit records and application records and licensing records we have that are covering that tax lot spatially. And so what you'll see is a return, and this one's a bit long because this site has a huge history because it used to be, I think, 12 tax lots that were consolidated, and now it's going through redevelopment. So it's going to give us a lot of addressing records in this case. We see a lot of retired addresses for this site. Uh, and as we scroll down, we start to get more information about planning applications. And so the way we formatted this pop-up as it pulls information, it's going to give you the application year. It's going to give you the application number. Oh, if I could highlight it all. And then it's gonna give you the type of application and then it's gonna give you the status. And so that format follows through, we could look through planning applications and we can see there's about five of them here. And we go through the building applications for structures. So this is everything around building permits around a, a, some sort of structure. There's a whole lot of them. And again, it follows that same format. We can keep going through and there's a lot of history here. So we can keep going down and down and down. And then we get to what we call permit applications at the site level. So things that happen across an entire tax lot. So something like a grading permit, uh, maybe an agreement, or maybe some sort of infrastructure permit. Those are those types of permits. So again, we see that similar structure and there's been a whole lot of activity here as well. And then when we get to the bottom, uh, we'll get to the business license and registration information. And in this case, you can see all the former businesses of this site and what their statuses are. So this little pop-up has got a lot of information in it, but it's really that stepping point of figuring out what permits might I be interested in looking up more information on. 
If I click on something nearby, I can also just quickly click around and find information on the map dynamically that way. So here's a, a site of a single family dwelling that's a much simpler um, pop-up and easier to look at. Um, and so you can simply click around the city and grab the results as you as your interest kind of follows that. So that's that's kind of what I want to point out. How this tool works is you click on it, you get that feedback, and you can get that information. And the real question is then, what do you do with it after that? Um, and so in this case, I have looked at these permits a little bit. And so one tip I want to point out before we move on is you've done some research. You've got a list of applications that are relevant to this property. You can copy and paste these, or you can just write them back up into this search bar. So I'm going to copy and paste this permit. And I'm going to hit search. It's going to find that permit. And you've noticed the pop-up now has changed. And this pop-up now is showing information about the planning application I was searching for. So right here, it's going to tell me some details about the land use application, what it is. It's a final plat. Um, it's currently in approved monitoring conditions and some description in here. The location information about the permit in general. But at the bottom, you're going to see this. For more details, click here. And so you'll see this on all of our planning applications. And it's going to directly link you to that online permit center portal site that Mariah was showing us. So this is a quick way to get to that same um, page. And then we can scroll down and look at all of the information she just showed us, see the documents, um, and so forth. Similarly, if we looked for an older permit in this system, so I'm going to go back and grab an earlier land use decision. I think this one didn't get migrated. And I'm going to search for it. It's again going to give us a pop-up, all the same details. And when I click here, it should kick us over to the other system where the documents live and more details for this application are. So this kicks you over to ePlans. It should pre-populate pre the login information. So you should just go directly in as a public user and be able to get into this system. So, um, so that's kind of how we built this tool, hopefully to direct traffic and get you to the system you need to get to, um, but also provide that a launching off point and ability to dive in deeper if you need to. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to wrap up the, the permit lookup tool because there's quite a bit to cover. Um, and I'm going to jump over to the zoning lookup tool and just spend a brief moment talking about this tool in general. Um, and so when you, when you open this one up, we have a disclaimer on it as it's related to land use regulations. We just wanted to provide some context about this tool and its applicability and how to use it. So once you click through that, you're going to see a lot of similar um, layout and kind of a similar function to what we just did in the permit lookup tool. So again, we've got the about page that defaults open that explains how to do this tool. Uh, I'm going to close it for now and free up some real estate, but this tool behaves exactly the same. So I can look again for that address, 210 Northeast 3rd Street. I'm going to zoom to it. Um, it's going to zoom in on the map. And the difference in this map, we've got all of our land use regulation information turned on. Um, and so what we can do though, oh no, that's no good. Let me try that again. My computer's been acting up all morning, so I'm going to throw it under the bus there. Um, let's zoom back into where we were. Let's click on the map. There we go. So in terms of this map, when we click on a tax lot of interest, what it will do is go behind the scenes and grab a lot of different land use regulation data and populate back information about the property that you're interested in. So in this case, it's looking and it's telling me, OK, the zoning designation on this property is commercial limited. Um, if I have more information, I can click these hyperlinks and it will direct me to the Ben code that's relevant to the commercial district where I can read all the applicable uh, information and regulations I need to see. I can also then see that this property is within a special plan district, uh, notably the Ben Central District and the Ben Central District South MMA. And again, if I have additional questions, I can link myself to the special, special plan districts in the Ben code and review those that information. And then I can also see that we don't have any historic designations to be concerned about on this property. And so this tool behaves again the same. I can click through the map or I can search for addresses. I can find information and the pop-up will update dynamically depending on the property that I've searched for. So that, that's pretty much a very similar build and a kind of the point is to be able to look up all of the applicable land use zoning regulations for a property quickly and easily. Um, this map has a bit more data that you can turn on and off 
And so if you think it's noisy to look at, you can just turn off some of this stuff and the map will still behave the same, give you the same results. So um, that's kind of the zoning lookup tool in a nutshell. And then the next piece, I'm gonna spend a moment talking about the planning app viewer and doing a quick demo. And really it applies to both the planning app viewer, the building app viewer and the engineering app viewer. These were all built in the same kind of um, uh, theme and, and intent, which is to provide access to building and planning applications across the city and allow you to kind of drill in and pull relevant information based on your needs and questions. And so we have a combination on these. These look a little bit different. These are called dashboards. Um, and so what you'll notice, there's a map dead center, but on the left-hand side, uh, when you open this up, you've got a series of filters that you can apply to all of our planning application data to drill down to answer questions that you might have. And so some of these filters are, are based on things like dates, statuses, project types, application types, review types, um, or they can be spatial. So we've got a neighborhood association area filter that will spatial your results uh, on filter your results spatially on the map. Um, and so we'll, we'll do a demo of this. And then as you move to the right, you'll see we've got a legend that's pre, pre um, determined to be on all the time. We can also turn on another legend if we want to. Um, and then we've got this dynamic widget counter that tells you how many applications are currently being pulled by your query or your filters. Um, and then below is the results of those, um, that filtered, the filtered data. So we're seeing the 100 most recent applications from newest to oldest. So in this case, if I scroll down, there'd be 23 applications in here. Um, this little widget box basically gives you a summary of the application number, the date type, status, um, the planner, and the, in the description. So <clears throat> the way this works, we built these thinking that um, the public would come in and have important questions that they want to answer. Um, and so one thing that we might be curious about is let's look at maybe we want to know all application dates within the last 90 days for a certain neighborhood association, let's say Summit West. So you can do that quickly by coming in, toggling the application date to 90 days. We see that the map updated dynamically with that change, our count changed, and now we probably have 300, well, we have 100 results, we've maxed out the box. Um, so maybe we then want to filter and narrow down. Let's go to Summit West for fun. And so if I turn on the spatial filter, that will update. Now we're down to 20 applications and the map is zoomed and adjusted. You saw it flash the boundary. So now our map and our results are only showing these 20 applications. And maybe we want to know something further. We want to say, let's look at um, all, oops, I got the wrong box, project types that are maybe final plat. How many final plats have we had on the west side in the last 90 days? So we filtered it down. Now we've got three and we can see those three on the map. We can use this um, little overview box. We can click on them. It will zoom to that result. It will pop up that pop-up that we've seen in those other applications already. Uh, kind of general details about the application, what its status is and where its location is. And that lovely click here button, which will navigate you to where you wanna go. You can also just click on those results in the map and get that same result. So I could zoom up here to this other final plot application and click on it and get the same results. So it's a very dynamic and useful way to look at the city and permits and applications that are currently in the queue. Um, and you can keep drilling through this. So if we weren't caring about you know, final plots, you could look for all type two applications with administrative notice. And so we can see there's six of those. And so we can kind of work through this depending on what your focus is um, and drill in and, and kind of hopefully get to that information. And the last thing I forgot to point out is we do have some tools within the map. Um, namely, you can search for an address um, or a tax lot number. And we have the home extent button, which returns us to the original piece. We've got a legend and then we've got additional layers you can turn on for extra context in this map. So in this case, um, as you do your research, if you found you wanted zoning on, we can turn on the zoning. And so you can look at applications and you can turn on and off zoning or you can turn on special plan district layers. So you can kind of add your context as needed. And so this can be really helpful if you're A, looking for all land use applications within your neighborhood association within a certain time period, or you could simply just look across the entire city with really no filters and say, what are all the new projects uh, that we've had um, in say the last 90 days, or you could zoom to your address. So maybe we wanted to see everything around 210 Northeast Third Street. Um, you could use this to hopefully narrow in and start to do a little bit of, of um, 
your research. So that all functions the very same way. Um, and so we've built this in mind and built the capacity to look across building applications. So structural permits, so things like new residential homes or new commercial and industrial buildings. Um, you can do that with the building application viewer. Um, and so another good example, again, you could, you could punch in your address and look at all the projects going on around your house uh, or around your neighborhood. Um, and so you can you bump through the application dates um, as needed. Um, adjust your filters and use these uh, to drill down to get to what you're after. Um, I will point out in all of these applications, we have preset uh, application date filters to kind of bracket in and not hopefully make the application crash. You can query all the way back to about 1993 with our permit records. Um, and so when you click to this to manual, it's going to, oh, I hope it doesn't crash, yeah, jumps to 112 thousand records. Um, this is everything from electrical to mechanicals to new family homes to commercial projects. You can dig deep. And so just be aware you can adjust those times to keep going deeper as needed. Um, and then the last one is the engineering app viewer. And that is really just another way to look at our site level uh, uh, permits. So things like grading permits, infrastructure permits, our special uh, event permits. Um, and so those take one of two forms. Um, right now they're polygons. So the last map was all points. Um, and so we see polygons and we see line segments now. So the way City View works, we can assign geometry types that are a little bit different than our old permitting system. So we can actually do a right away permit or a special event permit in this case on a street segment. And so you can use this tool to drill through again and, and look at those application types. All right, uh, and then the last piece is the data explorer and I'm gonna move fast because I think we're probably going long. Um, Michaela, hopefully you're not waving at me because I haven't been paying attention. Um, and I'm gonna walk through this one quickly, but this is really more reminiscent if you're familiar with our current public version of Boom. Um, it's kind of what we call the kitchen sink. And so this is a mapping application we built that allows you complete flexibility of what data you wanna look at and have on and off on the map as well as do some, some other kind of mappy things like measure, draw, print, um, make some spatial selections, maybe export some data to a table. Um, and so you'll see this looks very similar to our last uh, permit lookup tool and the zoning lookup tool and that we've got these widgets that look the same. So the tool default opens to the about page. Um, you can quickly click off of that. We can get to our legend. Uh, and we don't need to go over that. We also have the data layers button. And so when we open this up, we see there's a whole wealth of information in here. And we're continuing to add to this. We're continuing to build it out as we understand what the needs are. So right now we've generally got our planning applications and permit information in here, our business registrations, as well as some contextual information on things like our TSP, um, our land use uh, and regulation layers, um, some of the enterprise urban renewal districts, and then the NA boundaries are in here as well. And so this is all available to turn on and off in your map. Um, and so you can kind of build whatever view you need to look at to answer any questions you might have. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, we've got the base map button. We don't need to go into that, but we have a new tool in here called the select tool. And this allows you to make spatial selections um, of any data within the map and see that information in a table view. So maybe you wanna know all the permits that have happened within a city block. You can do things like that. And so I'm, I'll touch on this a little bit more, but that's more of an advanced feature that we don't really have time for today. But that's in here as needed. Um, and then in the map, again, we've got that lovely search tool again. We've all seen that. Um, and you can search for building permits, uh, addresses, you name it. Uh, but we also can make measurements in this tool. So you can make both aerial estimates as well as linear measurements. So using the tool, you can drag and drop lines, you can change units, you can make measurements as needed. Um, and then when you're done, you can clear it. You can also take this and draw on your map. So if you're gonna actually produce something you wanna to show to someone, um, you can come in here and you can get art, arts and crafts out and there's a whole drawer full of um, tools that you can add to the top of the map. And then if you mess up, you can just hit clear. And then lastly, you can also print this map to a, uh, a quick image PDF. Um, there's a lot of advanced settings as you dive into here, um, but in general, it'll print the view that you're looking at with the data turned on that you have. Um, and so once it runs, it'll open up, you can print a map. So if I had things in there, it would show up. Um, so that's also available. And then lastly, we've got this drawer at the bottom. And so it's this little button, when you open it up, should default up. When you've got more screen real estate, it's really nifty to have. 
But this is really showing you a table-based version of our permitting and planning application information. So there's a lot of records in here. Um, when you combine this table view with the select tool, you can actually get results and then export them to CSV. So in this case, if I wanted to take these results, I can go to options, export all to CSV, or I can make a selection, export that selection to a CSV, and I can take that and use it how I need to. And so there's a lot of tools and tricks in here, but in essence, it operates a lot like Excel. You can sort, sort fields, you can turn on and off fields through the plus button, um, and then you can zoom to items on the map. So I think uh, I've got, oh, one last thing. So that's kind of the, the overall operations of this tool. And the one thing I wanna point out is pop-ups and how they work. So in this application, you might get into a situation where you turn on a lot of data and you wanna find out more details about it. You can always click on a tax lot and this is a standard pop-up that's gonna show up. So we can, anything you click on, you'll get a pop-up. In this case, we've built in a tax lot information pop-up, which has a lot of information about who owns it, what the tax lot number is, um, what the property description is. You can get to dial directly from here if you need to do additional permit research, uh, maybe before our record keeping, or you can get to the tax lot map. Um, as you add map, as you add data layers to this, so I'm gonna turn on our planning applications. Um, and from the legend, you'll see dark blue outlines mean it's active, light blue means it's an inactive planning application. Um, you can click on things. In this case, I clicked on something and it's telling me there's one of four. So that's telling me there's actually a lot of stuff stacked on top of each other that I can't see. And so I'll have to click through here to see and review these. So in this case, there's three applications likely sitting here. So there's one for an ADU, there's one conditional use permit, and then there's another ADU permit. One looks like it was withdrawn, and then I'll get back to my tax slot pop-up. So as you add data to the map, just be aware that the pop-ups are kind of your friend and you have to navigate through them. Some, some properties you might find have 30 applications on them. And so it can be a little bit to dig through, but just be aware that's what's happening. Um, and then you can also click on everything else that we've put in this mapping view. So I turn on the TSP. Uh, if I click on a TSP road segment, I can get more information about that as well. In this case, I get the name, the road classification. Uh, in this case, it's an existing bike facility too. So it's, it's got a straight bike lane. So there's always more context to be found by clicking on the map um, as you explore the data layers. And with that, I will be quiet because it's 1201 and leave time hopefully for some questions. All right, thank you so much, Tanner. Um, if you have questions, now's the time to raise your hands at the bottom of the screen. You should have a button that says reactions. You can click on that and then click raise your hand. If you can't figure it out, feel free to unmute yourself and holler. Um, we do have a little bit of time for questions and I don't know if Tanner and Mariah, um, if you're willing to put your um, contact information up for anything following this uh, inquiries anyways. My, if anyone emails off the introduction page, that'll get to me. Um, so my contacts are already in here um, as needed. Uh, so you can just email at gis at bendoregon.gov or if you click on this, it should directly direct that email directly to me and someone on our team will get to it. Um, and Michaela, for, um, for me, feel free to send out my, my contact information after the meeting, that's fine. Okay. I can send that out afterwards um, to those of you who attended. So I'm happy to do that. Um, and we can also provide the slides. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Ryan? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll send you the presentation also. In the recording. <laughs> so, okay. I'm not seeing any hands. Great. Well, thank you guys for listening. Oh. Sorry, there's a lot. I, we do have one, Brenna. Hi, um, just because no one else was uh, asking a question. Um, I was just curious, so obviously something that I look for as a reporter is um, public comments on projects when like people like will submit like, you know, letters in opposition or um, in, in favor of something. And I didn't, I didn't explicitly see that in any of the examples that were run through today. Um, where would I find that in this new system? Yeah, so for that, Brenna, um, 
you know, we still kind of have the same process in place. Folks just reach out to the assigned planner for a project to submit those comments. Um, and then with those comments that come in that are gathered, um, the planner um, can upload those to that documents and images section that I showed. So you would expect to see that sort of information in the same place that you're going to find um, the plans and the decision and, um, you know, all, all that other documentation that, that lives with the project. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, seeing none other, I will let you guys go for the day. Um, thank you for attending and, and being attentive and you're listening and just know we're always here if things come up later on. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Michaela. Yeah, thanks, Mariah. Tanner, appreciate you. <laughs>